Hello there, my fellow brave but unlucky battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapter's lore. Last week, we started to cover the winners of the latest Space Marine poll. These guys belong to the rather admirable but unfortunate chapter known as the Lamentas. Previously, we did get started on their history and talked a bit about their campaigns. However, we didn't talk about their role in the Badabu War, which we're gonna detail today. We're also gonna talk a bit more about some other campaigns, as well as say a few words about their organization. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Lamenters in the Jericho Ridge, 812-M41 the Lamenters first became involved in the Achilles Crusade when the chapter provided an escort to the rogue trader Kazandas Lan. This settled a thousand-year-old honored debt to the Lan dynasty. The four squads of the escort fought alongside the rogue trader's own vassal regiments for a decade, and undertook a number of highly effective boarding actions against arch-enemy warships in the Outer Reach. In the year 812-M41, the vessels on which the Lamenters were traveling suffered a catastrophic drive failure during real space translation, forcing it to be abandoned on the outskirts of Fallon's Lament system. Only a handful of the Battle Brothers survived the accident. Learning of the tragedy and recognizing the survivor's limited application as a conventional unit, Watch Commander Mordegale of the Death Watch sought them out and procured their service in the Long Vigil. The bulk of the surviving Lamenters in the Jericho Reach have formed a single kill team under Watch Captain Brand MacLear of the Storm Wardens chapter, while several more serve in other cells alongside Battle Brothers of other chapters. The Badab War, 901-912-M41 during the final century of the 41st millennium, the Lamenters became involved in the Badab War as allies of the Secessionist Astral Claws, Mantis Warriors, and Executioner's Chapters. By 908-M41, the Lamenters had suffered significant losses via attrition. The continuous deployment defending the southern Badab sector, as well as serving as escort duty for many secessionist supply convoys, had taken a toll on the fleet-based chapter. Yet they were still a force to be reckoned with, and so the Loyalists put a plan into action to isolate them and take them out of the war. The ferocious Minotaur's chapter gathered its forces to strike where it would be most effective. Their opportunity finally came when the location of the Lamenters' chapter barge Mater Lacrimarum was discovered in orbit over the feral world of Optera, taking on supplies. The Minotaurs launched a lightning attack and succeeded in catching it and crippling its main plasma drive, thus preventing it from running away. The Lamenters were forced to defend their chapter barge at all costs, as it contained both their recovering battle casualties as well as their precious resource of gene seed. With the continued attacks upon the barge, the majority of the Lamenters' fleet was drawn back to the Optera system. Once there, the Minotaurs laid a bloody siege of 17 hours of brutal ship-to-ship -ship fighting. Though the Minotaurs too suffered heavy casualties, they eventually overpowered the Lamenters by virtue of their brutality and sheer weight of numbers. Their forces shattered, the few remaining Lamenters were forced to surrender rather than risk the annihilation of their precious battle barge. The majority of their fleet was left in ruin or drifting in the void. The Minotaurs claimed salvage rights to the crippled Lamenters' fleet and the war gear of the Fallen to replace their own heavy losses. The surviving Lamenters were incarcerated on the prison hulk orbiting the Nightshade of Sagan II, amid rumors of their growing insanity in this confinement. Only 311 Lamenters' battle brothers survived to be interned on the prison hulk orbiting Sagan II for the rest of the war. Less than 100 Lamenters were deployed elsewhere during the fighting that still remained. 
However, the chapter's severe losses effectively removed them from the secessionists' order of battle. Not long afterwards, inquisitorial missions were sent to the whole worlds of the Mantis warriors and the executioners, but no separate mission was dispatched to contact the Lamentas. Whatever findings the Inquisition uncovered from the Lamenters' chapter barge after the battle at Optera remain sealed. Sealed even from the knowledge of the inquisitorial reports made available to the Segmentum Conclave at the time. One standard year after the death of Badab Primaris at the end of the war, in 913 M41, the remaining secessionists of the Astral Clause, the Executioners, the Mantis Warriors, and the Lamenters, were put on trial before an especially convened consistorial court of their peers in the Adeptus Astartes. The very existence of the chapters was at stake. Despite the attempts of the Inquisition to have the matters placed fully under their control, they failed. A conclave of five Space Marine chapter masters, whose forces were not part of the conflict, thus they were fairly impartial, were convened in judgment. They were to pass a verdict on the fate of the secessionist chapters in accordance with Astartes tradition. The consistorial court found all the chapters who had taken part in the Badab secession guilty. Guilty of both breaking their compact of loyalty and honor with the Codex Astartes and the ancient covenant with the emperor that that represented. The Lamenters had not rebelled against the Imperium out of treachery, or following a turn to the Chaos Powers, but only because of pride. They had believed the attacks by the Inquisition on the Astral Clause as infringing upon the traditional autonomy of the Maelstrom Warders and the Adeptus Astartes. The Lamenters were eventually granted forgiveness by their action by the High Lords of Terra. However, just like their cousins in the Executioners and the Mantis Warriors, they were required to undertake a 100-year-long penitent crusade to atone for this transgression. They would have to do so without the right to recruit neophytes to replace their losses during this time of punishment. Their future survival would therefore be left in their hands and the grace and benevolence of the Emperor. After the Lamenters' participation in the Badab War, their chapter banner was a tattered remnant. When they were granted the Emperor's forgiveness, the banner was given to the Adeptus Sororitas to be repaired and purified. The sisters' handiwork was said to be inspired by the Emperor himself, and it is said that they wept as they wove. They contemplated the Emperor's great sacrifice for humanity at the end of the Horus Heresy, and the terrible sins of the Lamenters against him. The banner became an artifact known as the Banner of Tears, and was taken with the Lamenters on their subsequent crusade. The Second Tyrannic War, 992 M41 Unfortunately, the Lamenters seem to continue to carry their bad luck with them, as their penitent crusade led them straight into the path of the Tyranids' High Fleet Kraken. Although they were instrumental in slowing the advance of this terribly alien menace, the Lamenters once again took heavy losses. In one particularly notable battle, a number of Lamenters' space marines fought a heroic last stand on the planet Malvolian, which was rapidly being consumed by the Tyranid organisms. The actions of the Lamenters allowed for many Imperial civilians to be evacuated from the doomed world, but they lost their lives in the process. They were not the only chapter to suffer directly against the Tyranids though, as the Red Hunters chapter were assigned to be pretty much their watchdogs during this penitent crusade. The Red Hunters suffered heavy losses as well, since they had to take a stand against the High Fleet alongside the Lamentas. As a result of the horrific losses suffered in their many battles with the Tyranids, barely three companies of the Lamenters still remained, while they are prevented from recruiting new neophytes because of their continuing penitent crusade. Whether the chapter will survive long enough to begin recruiting anew, or have its banner and badge entered into the hallway of heroes in the inner Imperial Palace on Terra remains to be seen. The Lamenters remain in their heart a Blood Angel's successor chapter, 
heir to the glorious and unique martial traditions and brutally effective way of war practiced by the sons of Sanguinius. They adhere to the basic tenets of the Codex Astartes, with a notional strength of 10 companies, each comprising 100 battle brothers, with the usual division of one veteran company, one scout company, four battle companies, one tactical reserve, one assault reserve, and one devastator reserve company. However, like all their fellow scions of Sanguinius, there is a very great deal of flexibility between the companies, and they rarely fight in full cohesion. Apart from the 10th scout company, whose members had yet to complete their training and become full battle brothers. Chapter recruitment was also carried out on a practical basis with likely aspirants called from feudal worlds and far-flung imperial colonies from wherever the chapter's fleet roving course took it. The Lamenter's order of battle favors shock assault tactics, often delivered via a close air assault utilizing the chapter's Thunderhawks and Storm Raven gunships. In terms of operational equipment and insignia, the Lamenters cleave more to the standard panoply of the Space Marines than their other Blood Angels forebears and their fellow Blood Angels second founding successor chapters. Although this may be more of a matter of ease of resupply and maintenance for a fleet-based chapter with no home port that is forced to rely largely on its own artificers. The chapter does retain a few cherished examples of sanguinary relics, but aside from their large number of air assets, heavy tanks like land raiders and ball predators are less common with the Lamenters than any other Blood Angel successors. At the same time, the suits of Terminator armor are particularly rare in the Lamenters armory, and are valued beyond price by the chapter. As with their progenitors, the Lamenters' chaplains operate as part of their overall chapter command, rather than subordinate to it in each company, as is the case with most Codex-compliant chapters. This enables the chaplains to watch for the growing problems of the Red First in the chapter's ranks, while the Sanguinary Priesthood, aka the chapter's apothecaries, hold a particularly prominent role, and is known by the Lamenters as the Calyx. It has been often observed that it is the Calyx that has the greatest part in holding the chapter together, through its many trials and misfortunes, as the sanguinary priests of the Lamenters tend not only to the physical health of the Astartes, but also the spiritual stigmata that they bear. I would assume that after all their bad luck in their campaigns, even a space marine would need a psychiatrist. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Lamenters chapter for today. We are not done with them yet though, as I would still like to make an episode on a few other bits of lore, including beliefs, chapter heroes, and chapter relics. Are the Lamenters among your favorite chapters? What would you have done in their place at the onset of the Badab War? I mean, it is obvious that not taking the side of the Astral Clause would have been better for them, but do you think they were right to engage the Inquisition? Let us all know what you think in the comments below. Was the video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.